Hi, it's Pete Reed. Um, okay, uh, I've been asked to uh, by a few people on how to create a, a simple threefold leaflet in Microsoft Word. So a threefold leaflet is like this, where a piece of paper has been folded uh, into three. Um, and as you can see, we've got the um, uh, we finish up with a sheet of paper, which when you open it, you actually get to see what's inside. Um, and therefore, we finish up with one, two, three, four, five, six uh, pieces of text that we can actually be working on or six pieces of text for people to read. Now what I've got over here is some lorem ipsum text from lorem-ipsum.net and we're going to use that as the dummy text as we go through the process. So what I'm going to do first of all is move across into Microsoft Word and as you can see here I am in Microsoft Word I think it's probably 2007 um, to be actually certain which version I've got to be honest um, and what I want to do is to start out by creating a setup so it works properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to page layout. Because in page layout, I want to adjust the margins so they're as narrow, uh, so they're fairly narrow. Now you can't return uh, reduce your margins to zero because uh, most printers have got a small non-printing area. So keeping them fairly small is a good idea, but completely removing them is not. The second thing I want to do on this is to change the orientation. So I'm going to change it to landscape. And the third thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into view and make it so that we can actually see the full page on the screen. OK, so here we've now got uh, our page all ready for us to, to start. Um, and so the next step I want to do is to actually start adding some text boxes onto this screen so that we're actually in a position to start working. Now, as you can see at the top, I've got my ruler and we can actually see that if we start from here and go across, We've got just uh, around 27 centimetres. So that means that each box is probably going to be just under nine uh, to make it fit nicely on the page. So if I want to um, insert a text box, if I go to insert text box, then here I can see the various options. And what I want to do is I want to draw a text box. So I've clicked on to draw a text box. I've moved my cursor up into the top. And I draw it across to just about nine, something like that, because I can always adjust them a little bit later. Bring it down to the bottom of the page and release. And there I've now got uh, my, my first text box. So I'm going to uh, select that text box, Control C to copy it, click outside and then Control V will paste it. And now I can drag this across and position it where I would like it on the page. Make sure I deselect and then Control V again. And then again, I can just move across. Now, as you can see, uh, I've actually got a slight overlap here. So let me just check and see what's actually, if I can actually get them properly to fit. No, they're not quite going to fit. So what I need to do is to adjust the size of these. Now, by highlighting them all, I can right click format the text box and in the here I've got an option for size and as you can see the height is set at 18.53 and the width is set at 9.57 so we did say that needed to be just under 9 so let's change that to um, 8.57 and have a look and see what difference that has made and as you can see we've now got these boxes that are uh, slightly better in terms of their in terms of their shape. We've got a, a white margin that will allow for the internal fold on the page, and so everything seems to be working quite fine there. Okay, if I press Control and Enter, then that will actually move all of that down onto the next page because um, I've now created a new page. I highlight these boxes again. There we go. Control C to copy. I come back up onto the top of this page now and control V I've now got all of my boxes in here now just using the arrow keys with the boxes selected will allow me to adjust their position on the page quite nicely okay so what I've now finished up with is I've got two pages and the two pages have both got three text boxes on there now the next thing to point out is the way that we actually want the text to work on this document. Because this, if this is my front page, uh, then this box here is going to be the, the front of my document. So if that's going to be the front of my document, 
then when I actually fold it to make that into the front, that means that is going to become the back and this becomes the, uh, the leading page on the inside flap. So what I want to be able to do is to go from this page onto here as my next uh, text box, then onto this text box, then onto this text box, then to there and then to there. So what I need to do is to create that, that uh, the text box links, the text box links that will allow me to do that. And of course, it's very easy to do. So if I go to um, format, the first options I've got over here is to draw a text box, text box, create a link and break a link. So I'm in that box. And so that is my highlighted box. So with that as the highlighted box, I click on create a link. And then I point to the next box where I want to create a link to and click. So let's just go through that again. I click on the box um, and then I click on create a link to that box and I click on the box I want that to go into. OK, so let me just continue to do that. So I click on create a link and it's going to go into that box there. I select that box, create the link and it's going to go into that box there. So I can now select that box, create the link and it's going to flow into that box there. So now all of these boxes have got a, a text that will flow between them. So let's just check and see if that actually works. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go across back onto the PowerPoint slide and then I'm going to pick up my text here. And then once again, I can right click and copy. Come back onto my Word document. And then if I paste that in with Control V, as you can see, the text has now flowed from there onto here. So Control V again, and it's flowed across into there. Control V again, it's across into the next box, Control V and Control V. And so as you can see, the text is now flowing quite nicely from here down into here and it's working that well. OK, I'd like to add some uh, images into this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor at the top of that page, uh, press return and type in uh, this is a title. As you can guess, that's going to be the title. And so what I want to do here is I want to format that title. If I go to the home page, uh, the home menu option, then this ribbon here allows me to actually use all manner of preset titles. So I'm going to start out with this is a title using the title uh, system. And then underneath here, I'm going to put the, uh, my subtitle, which cunningly I'm going to use the subtitle box for. Um, and as you can see already, that's starting to look as though it might actually mean something. I now want to insert a picture. But I'm going to use clip art rather than uh, use anything else. So I'm going to go to insert uh, clip art and then I've chosen to look for people. So I'm going to click on go. And here it is. It now brings up people in various uh, activities. Well, there's got a, a picture of somebody holding a light bulb. So I'm going to use that one and I'm just going to stretch that out so it fits across nicely across the page. Um, and as you can see, if I now move up to the top of this and just come down a little bit and I'll probably place a space after that one. As you can see, um, I've now got something that looks like it might actually mean something. Um, and the text has continued to wrap as we've been working. Note here that in the last box, the text is now starting to drip off the bottom. So we have to be aware of this when we're adding text that we don't suddenly lose bits and pieces as we're adding images. So here I'm going to come across onto there. And this time I'm going to insert the picture of the racing car. So as you can see, I've inserted the picture of the racing car. And again, I'm going to enlarge that so it fits inside of that uh, available space. Yep. So again, I've got my, uh, my racing car in there. It's not quite fitted as I would like it, so I'm just messing about with that. Um, and again, I can carry on and choose different images to appear in different places. So uh, there we go. There's another image that's now uh, made an appearance into that place. Um, in fact, I don't like that image. I'm going to delete that. Um, I'm going to move my cursor at the beginning of a paragraph um, and I'm going to use that image instead. Right now, that image is too big to fit into that space. 
So what I can do is I can actually crop the image. So if I right click on the image and go into format the picture, then here um, I've gotten the, I've gone into the wrong place. Click onto that and go to size. Then here I've actually got the option to crop the picture. Now I can crop it from the left or the right, but I can also crop it from the top or the bottom. Now I'm going to crop it for four centimeters across the top and um, eight centimeters from the bottom. And as you can see, it's actually going to show me what it looks like before I actually uh, get to that uh, that stage. I think that will stand a bit more cropping. So what happens if I go to six centimeters from the top? Yep, yeah. and let's go to um, twelve centimeters from the bottom. Yep, yeah, that's a much more tight and compact image. I, I prefer that. So again, I'm going to close. And again, I could come across here. Um, try not to split a word and insert another picture. And again, we've got the same issue. Uh, so I want that image to be slightly bigger. Um, and then this time I'm going to concentrate on the camels in the foreground. Uh, so this time I'm going to right click into size. Um, and then here I'm going to format, uh, I'm going to take 12 straight off the top. And, and let's uh, go and find the image. Oh, looks like 12 from the top was far too much. Um, so let's actually, in fact, it's, it's actually telling me that 8.57 is the height of the image. So taking 12 off was probably a bit, a little bit optimistic. So let's take six off the top. Yeah, so now we've just got the camels in there uh, and then I'm going to just close that box at that point. Now, as we've actually been working, remember, we've been pushing text further across the page. So I'm just going to insert one more image onto this page. And again, I'm just going to choose. Um, uh, well, let's choose this uh, this flower moment. There we go. So there we go. We've now chosen that as, uh, as our image for the back. Now here uh, I've got the text. Now notice if I go onto here and highlight some text and delete, the box is still full and the box is still full because of the amount of images or whatever that we've put in there that's forced the image down. So if I press the um, shift and control key and then touch the end key, what it will do, it will highlight all the text to the end of the uh, available text. I then touch delete and it's now, as you can see, created some white space at the bottom of there. Now there's nothing to stop me if I wanted to from inserting a table into my box. So if I'm going to insert a, a two by three table, uh, so that people can say, uh, I don't know, name, address, Oops. See if I could spell, um, and I don't know, a telephone number. And again, I can just play about with these to get to the size that I would actually like. Um, I want that one to come down a little bit because the address box is going to be bigger. And then I'm just going to bring that down. OK, so as you can see, I've now created myself um, a little leaflet that we could actually continue to play with to get the results that we actually wanted. The final thing I'm going to do is I don't like these black borders around my text boxes. So once again, I'm just going to select these uh, text boxes at the top. Um, and then I'm going to right click to format the text box and then here um, I've got the um, options of colours and lines. And here I can say I want no colour on those lines. And so the lines are still there, but we can't actually see them because of the, of the way we've got it formatted. Other things I can do inside of this text box as well, for example, is if I go across to format, I can actually play about with any of these formats to give the box the appearance that I would actually like. Now, bear in mind, if you're using inkjet printers, that this is actually going to sort of take quite a bit of ink if we start messing about too much. OK, so let's just recap on the way we remove the lines from the boxes. And to do that, I selected the box. Um, I hold the shift key down so I can select multiple boxes. I then right click and went into format the text box and then um, chose a colour for the lines of no colour. And then OK. And there it is.
we've now created a leaflet that can be printed and folded um, and everything will work tickety-boo. Okay, I hope that helps and I look forward to uh, talking to you later. So, oops, there's um, the wrong box. So there we go. That's Pete Reed creating a simple threefold leaflet in Microsoft Word. Talk to you later. Cheers, bye.